Right, let's get to the big news this week then. Bids have been submitted to buy Manchester United from the Glazer family. So, Darren, how big a sale would this be by the Glazers? If this... World record sale. Yeah. Um, and a lot has been said um, in this battle, if you like, this PR battle for public opinion and, 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 and fan approval about the pitches, if you like. And you've got Jim Radcliffe, who's pitching to have fan inclusion and you know he's born in Manchester or, or in the locality and he's appealing to the hearts and minds and the Qataris are saying we're going to wipe the debt out hmm. and just as a as a, my own point of view you know and I said this in the tease before the show before the World Cup the Qataris were the enemy mm -hmm. and now after the World Cup as they hover around Premier League clubs Fans go weak at the knees, and then not all fans. Not all fans. Not all Some fans. fans and we were feel. we were caveating that a bit yeah. earlier, but a lot of fans mm -hmm. uh, are looking at the idea they could wipe debts out, they could buy big players. I know your paper's got a piece yeah. about them hovering around Spurs, yeah. uh, and I'll hand over to you, John, in a in a second. But I, I do just want to show you a couple of papers that are covering this story. It's across all of the back pages. Sun back page. For all of the PR pitches, it's about who will show them the money. If you've seen Jerry Maguire, you'll know all about that. Um, <laughs> and the subject there from Martin Lipton's piece in The Sun says it all. Glazers won't do a cut price deal. It's six billion pounds or they stay. That would <laughs> represent... Bad, doesn't it? <laughs> well, quite, exactly. It would represent a huge um, uptick on what was the world record for an English club, which was 2.5 billion pounds played for Chelsea mm. um, and I want to show plus you plus a few add-ons it has uh, to be plus said. a few add-ons as well I'll just show you uh, Sam Wallace's piece in the Telegraph as well uh, because there are too many quotable lines in this to mention but I'm going to read you one paragraph it says, if the World Cup finals are the equivalent of booking the planet's greatest act for a limited run then acquiring United could be set to buying could be said to be buying the whole theme park in perpetuity the club come with a catalogue of 150 years of history a franchise of 467 million fans around the world according to United's latest financial results whose loyalty for the most part can be relied upon they say there are some things money can't buy in football it gets you about just about everything trophies credibility and the gratitude of hundreds of thousands of fans you never have to meet it's the <laughs> ultimate yeah. in soft power um strength uh, and, and there is one other piece, actually, by Riath al Samra. We'll come to know him. He's got a new column in the Mail on Sunday. He's a very, very talented writer, declaring interest he's a friend. But, <laughs> sorry, you know, he is, he is but, but it's a terrific piece where he says, look, you've got people talking about sports washing as far as the Qataris are concerned, but you also have greenwashing yeah. that's mm. been levelled at Jim Radcliffe, mm. these petrochemicals, etc., etc. And so... You know, and, and obviously we don't know about the other potential bidders as well. And I know you've done a piece today about the potential for the Gulf states getting involved in Premier League clubs to change the game forever for the Premier League. Yeah, this is, this is a, I think, a very symbolic moment, another big moment in this journey, actually. This isn't the start point. You know, we've had the World Cup in Qatar. We've seen Manchester City's success. We've seen the PSG project. Yeah. Um, and Newcastle, but I think what's what's big about United, what's different, is this would be like the first of the old-fashioned, iconic, traditional trophy asset clubs to to change hands and to be bought by a Gulf state. And this this would seem to be a further ratcheting up of of the journey we've been on. Where <clears throat> you know, to, I spoke to Kieran Maguire this week, the football finance expert, yeah. and he said he had a great phrase. He said, you know, it used to be millionaires, then it became multi-millionaires then billionaires and now it's multi-billionaires and that's that's where football's starting to head and and i think united would be another step change part of my piece was exploring what that, that would mean for the rest of the premier league um there's a sense that american investors might now be put off a little bit certainly from investing in the top clubs because they can't compete and that the market would change even further um mm. but I'm, it's really interesting you picked up on the comms aspect then because that's one of the things that's fascinated me about this story that you know we've, we've seen a few back pages there that are very much behind Jim Ratcliffe and, and what he could promise but 
I don't think there's been the swell of sort of support for him that I would have expected, the bandwagon, that he okay. might have suspected when he went out in front in November to declare his interest. Um, there's been support for him, but I don't think there's been that, that huge unstoppable momentum. Why do you think that? It, because of this so-called greenwashing or is it because of what happened I, at Nice? Uh, there was, I, I, think, I think both, Vicky. I think, I think okay. the nice, nice and maybe what's happened with, with the inner cycling team yeah. isn't the great, greatest advert. I think fans are so savvy and aware now, and, and we're aware as a media that there's so much, so many reasons to own clubs and, and that we need to look closely at owners. And greenwashing, which I'll, I'll confess isn't a concept I knew too much about before Jim Ratcliffe came on the scene, but when you think it through, you know, a chemicals magnate who wants to put his money into sport, you know, healthy pursuits, you, could, you can put the two together and say there's a, a reputational massaging element to that. But I actually think when it comes down to it, it's, it's the buttons that, that that Qatari bid presses, as you've alluded to, Dan, you know, they, they, and I've spoken to a few people around the bid, they've done their work, they've done their research, they know what supporters want, wiping out the debt, redeveloping Old Trafford, putting the academy at the heart of it mm. and investing in players. That's been, that's been the messaging. And I think those are ultimately the arguments that fans now buy. Um, rival fans might look at the moral implications, but we've seen enough of this with Newcastle and, and, and with, with, with Manchester City that when it comes to fans of clubs, most of them look at those things that they, what does it really mean? What, what are the things I want? United fans have wanted rid of the Glazers for a Did, long time. Is it fair to say as well, people castigate fans for accepting it, but fans have no real power anyway over who yeah. controls their club? They uh, don't. Yeah, I, 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 I think that's true. I think, I think, I think fans are always going to back their, their, their club. I understand that. There is, a, there is a bit to it where when you get fans who start to then defend human rights abuses, you think, well, you don't need to do that. No, you don't no need indeed. to do that. Just, just you know, talk about have, have they been good owners or not. Mm. So that's when it spills over. And I don't think most fans do. Um, but I haven't seen a huge, you know, monitoring social media over the last few days looking at those United supporters groups, those influential United voices, and there hasn't really been a debate about Qatar, not, not the one that you'd have expected, mm. which seems, suggests to me that they're taking a step back and thinking more about what this would mean for the club than any instinctive moral objections to it. OK, let's get more on this then, because we can get the thoughts of the Financial Times sports business reporter, Samuel Agini. Good morning to you, Samuel. Good to well, speak Samuel. to you. Samuel. Look, just put it into perspective. How much are these bids worth? I think the, the, the key point about this is not, not what the initial bids are worth. The, the stock right now implies that Manchester United's equity is worth $4.3 billion. There's about $700 million or so of debt on top of that. So that is implying that this deal is going to be worth somewhere north of $5 billion. That would be a record for a sports asset anywhere. Um, and whether, whether the, the key thing here is whether the Glazers can get a proper auction going and, and, and send, send this up even higher. If, if competitive tension is introduced, if they can get someone to go head to head against uh, the, the Qatari bid, it, it could get very interesting and very, very frothy. Samuel, just give us a sense of the timeline around this. How long of a process will this be? I think what, what I've been what I've been hearing is that it's it's key if there is a sale. If a sale goes ahead uh, by by the summer, certainly because any new owner wants that transfer window to uh, to really set set a mark. You you know if you're going to come in and put put a stamp on the club, you want to be ready uh, with a plan for the transfer window. So I'd, I'd expect something like that. But again, I, I, we also all need to be, this is very different to the Chelsea situation, which was a private asset. This, this is a public stock. So I actually think we all need to be more careful. This Everyone around this is being more careful um, with, uh, you know, with United being a, a New York listed uh, stock. Do you think this just comes down to money? Does the biggest bidder wins, or is there going to be more to the, the process than that? I think there's more to the process, and I think what's really interesting is these uh, these official statements that have come out have really appealed to the fans, and we saw this with the Chelsea sale. We saw that 
uh, it, it was seen that, you know, it was, it, it was perceived to be by, by the bidders in Chelsea that uh, winning over the fans was important. Uh, but there, we had a very different situation. We had a seller who, who, who had to sell. There was a deadline. There were sanctions in place. With United, the Glazers do not have to sell. And appealing to the Glazers is going to be what ultimately convinces them whether or not to part with this asset. They have a, they have a very thick skin. They've been criticized since before, uh, since 2005, when they, when they bought this club in the first place. They, they um, you know... They, they don't have to sell in this case. They've, they've chosen to explore it. But uh, ultimately, I think appealing to the fans is important. I see why everyone's doing it, but you, you've got to appeal to these, these owners.